Hear this, yeah? Millimeter waves, innit? Why would the government allow that, though? It's population control, cozy. Look at the new 20 pound note, the 5G towers, and look above it. What do you see? Coronavirus! Oh my god, uncle, is that true? <sighs> okay, I'll break this video into five parts. What is 5G? What is ionizing radiation? What is the research saying? What are viruses? And then what go on with this conspiracy theory? Future Jegs yo. This video ended up being mad long so I'll touch the first four parts in this video and then in the next video I'll doppy that conspiracy theory. Anywho, back to the more distant past. What is 5G? 5G is the fifth generation of wireless communication. No, you're the ops. Talk about the millimetre waves in it. Man did his research. Tell the people them the truth. Okay. First, let's start on what the basics of what a wave actually is. Waves have four properties, but you only need to understand two of them for this video. Frequency and wavelength. Frequency is the number of waves that pass a point per second. That means the higher the frequency, the more waves you have in the same amount of time. Wavelength is the distance from one wave crest to that same point on the next wave. So the higher the wavelength, the longer the wave you have, just like this one here. Get to the millimetre waves fam! Let me land! 5G is an electromagnetic wave. This means that it has an electric section and a magnetic section that are interlinked just like this. Light waves and microwaves are examples of electromagnetic waves or EM waves for short. This is the full spectrum. Notice the difference in the structure of the wave as we move from the radio waves to the gamma waves. The wavelengths get shorter and the frequency increases. So wait, microwaves are the same thing as visible light? Well, yes, but actually no. They are both made of the same stuff but are different. For example, the keys on a piano generate the same type of wave, a specific type of sound wave. The only difference is the frequency and the wavelength of the wave. The sound from the low key has a longer wavelength and lower frequency. This is the equivalent of the radio waves in the EM spectrum. And the higher key has a shorter wavelength and a higher frequency. And this will be like the gamma rays in the EM spectrum. The middle key, this will be analogous to the visible part of the EM spectrum. 5G waves have a wavelength of one millimeter and a frequency of 300 gigahertz. This means that a 5G tower will be sending out EM waves that are roughly one millimeter long in wavelength and roughly 300 billion waves will pass the point every second. Vegan! They're called extremely high frequencies though. Isn't that dangerous? Why aren't you mentioning that? Why would the company want to kill its customers if they're making their money? No, Jaden's actually partially right here. Let's look back at our EM spectrum. We see that one millimeter waves are just at the boundary between microwaves and infrared. That means that 5G will be using extremely high frequencies compared to radio and microwaves, but relatively low frequencies when compared to infrared radiation, visible and all the others here. But I swear microwaves are used to cook food and it's using extremely high frequencies of microwaves. Open your third eye cuz. That's an excellent point. The EM waves in a regular microwave has a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz and a wavelength of 12.2 centimeters. And remember that 5G has 300 gigahertz with a wavelength of one millimeter. This may seem like 5G will fry you like instant noodles, but that's not how the science works. Microwaves work using a process called dielectric heating. I'll keep this very, very simple. Most of our foods have fat, sugars, and water inside them. These happen to vibrate at a specific frequency of EM wave. More detail can be found in this video here by the engineer guy. I'll put the link in the description. But the gist of it is this. 
as an EM wave with this specific wavelength and frequency passes through where water is, the water starts to move around and then it bumps into other molecules, food molecules in your food and that's what causes them to heat up. This is why the moist part of your food heats up very very fast and it's super hot and the drier parts of your food usually take longer to heat up. Think about this, if 5G is causing dielectric heating in our bodies then we should be seeing high temperature on the side of our bodies that is facing the towers. This is one of the reasons why the food in your microwave has to rotate so the food is cooked evenly. Bear in mind this has nothing to do with but is there not another way this radiation can be dangerous? I swear some of these cause cancer. A lie? Wake up sheeple. Good question. Look at the list of radiation again. Light moves in packets called photons. So this last column, energy per photon, tells us how much energy each photon contains. It all looks like the same thing, doesn't it? But if you've seen my previous video on prefixes, you would recognize some of these prefixes. The unit is electron volt. Put simply, this is the kinetic energy that an electron gains as it moves from its rest position when one volt is applied to it. This is, trust me, this already is ultra simplistic because the con this concept is way beyond GCSE level, but let's just run with this for now. Basically, the larger the electron volts, the larger the energy the electron absorbed from the photon. Just keep it as that. We see that red light provides roughly 1.24 electron volts of energy and violet light provides roughly 10 times more than that, 12.4 electron volts. That means violet light can provide more energy, 10 times more e kinetic energy to an electron than red light does. Let's now look at this extremely dangerous, extremely high frequency radiation. This on the other hand has 1.24 milli electron volts. Remember that the prefix milli stands for a thousand, which means we have to divide this number by a thousand to get 0.00124 electron volts. What is this waffle? That means that red light, which is the weakest of the visible wavelengths, is a thousand times more powerful than this dangerous 5G radiation and purple or violet light is 10,000 times more powerful than it. As we go up this table, we increase the energy of the waves. When we approach a point when the electron volts is roughly 124, that's enough energy to accelerate electrons out of the structure of DNA. Remember that when electrons are gained or lost, this forms a charged ion. This is why radiation that can cause ionization is called ionizing radiation. Our genome, which is all of your genes that you have inside you, contains proto-oncogenes. Proto comes from the word that means before, like prototype. Onco comes from the word that means tumor, like oncology, which is the study of tumors and cancers. Ionizing radiation, specifically gamma rays, X-rays and UV rays mutate the proto-oncogenes into oncogenes which can then go on to cause tumours and cancers. But look, the dangerous 5G radiation is a hundred thousand times weaker than the weakest ionising wave. A hundred thousand is a lot. Let me help you visualise the magnitude of this. One litre of water is roughly, actually it's exactly one kilogram. A hundred thousand kilogram is roughly the mass of a blue whale. This is the largest animal that's ever existed on this planet. So my G, a hundred thousand times more of something is a lot. What is the research on 5G saying? Some of the confusion is coming from the actual scientific community itself. There are research papers claiming both sides with regards to radio frequencies causing health issues. I'm going to be displaying 11 abstracts, 5 claiming that there's no health issues, 5 claiming that there are health issues and one that aligns with my own take on the whole situation. 
feel free to pause and have a read. I've highlighted green for the ones that show no health issues and red for the ones that are showing health issues. Did you clock that none of the scientific paper claimed something? They didn't claim. This paper here summarizes my thinking on this whole situation. The research is inconsistent. No one specific cancer is linked to radio frequency exposure. And so the evidence is weak in terms of its consistency. In science, you want reproducible results. That means that I do an experiment and if you do the same experiment, you get the same results as I do. It is likely that some of the people that funded these papers have vested interest in certain results, so there are biases. A friend of mine who's a biologist told me about a certain situation she was in. She was working with this company um, doing a research on some type of drug and the results that they got from their experiments were nonsense but they fabricated the results to make it look more significant than it was. They did this to secure money from the company that they were planning to sell the drug to. This does happen which is why scientists peer review their work which just means that they have other people repeating their experiments to see that they're not guessing with their results. What are viruses? Viruses are segments of genetic material that's inside a lipid, fatty layer and a protein layer. This genetic material can either be DNA or its older cousin RNA. Many scientists don't consider viruses to be alive. That's because they need host cells in order to survive and replicate. They do this by tricking the cell into eating them and then using the cell's machinery to produce more copies of themselves. How does it trick the cell? The outer layer of viruses have surface proteins, antigens. When they bind to the surface proteins of the host cell, it activates phagocytosis, aka cell eating. Different cells in your bodies have different surface proteins, which is why specific viruses attack specific cells. For example, HIV attacks a specific type of white blood cell. COVID-19 in particular is a zoonotic pathogen, which means that it originated from animals and it crossed over to humans. This is just like HIV, which is a mutant form of SIV, which infects other apes. And while we're here, it is very, very unlikely that HIV started because someone decided to Netflix and chill with a monkey. It's more likely, just like with the COVID-19, that it came from eating um, bushmeat or it could have came from a scratch when someone was trying to catch the monkey, anything like that. But it wasn't, it wasn't Netflix and chill. The next video I'm going to do, I'm going to take apart this video that's circulating on this 5G conspiracy and coronavirus. So stay tuned for that one.